Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. Also, hit that post notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Be careful down in the comment section of the videos. A lot of spam, a lot of scammers. I will never ask you to contact me by WhatsApp or Telegram. I also do not invest money for my subscribers. So please be careful. Don't get yourself scammed. If you want up to 12 free stocks, Weeble is gonna give you up to 12 free stocks. When you open a new Weeble brokerage account, put any amount of money in that brokerage account. They're gonna give you up to 12 free stocks for just trying out their brokerage app. There's a link down in the description box of this video. Click on that Weeble link. Open up your new Weeble account today. Go get that free stock. Go get that free money. I'm gonna also send you a Weeble tutorial video to walk you through how to use the Weeble app to make your first trade. All you gotta do is email me and let me know you've opened the Weeble account. You funded the Weeble account. And I'm gonna send you that Weeble tutorial video so you can start building wealth today. Now the email address is down in the description box as well. So go down to that description box. You're gonna see the Weeble link. Click on that, open it up, put you some money in it. And then right below that, you're gonna see my email address. That's where you wanna email me and let me know you want that tutorial video. Well guys, I'm out here on a beautiful, beautiful Monday late afternoon relaxing on the patio listening to a little bit of music and you know something ran across my mind and i started thinking on it and, and, and said to myself you know something instead of me just thinking on it why don't i share it why don't i pick up this camera do a live stream and let the folks that follow me know what's on my mind and that's what I decided to do, right? So, so that's what I'm doing. And what we're going to talk about is how to make, keep, and multiply your wealth. For a lot of you guys who follow me, you'll know that financial freedom behind, behind God and my family is like the third most important thing to me right? My freedom, my financial freedom. And, and I know for a lot of you guys, that holds true as well. At some point, you'd like to be at freedom. You'd like to be able to control your own financial destiny. You'd like to have more of your time back. I know that's important to you because you've told me that. You've subscribed to my YouTube channel because you believe I can help you get there. And I certainly appreciate that. But as I was thinking about that this afternoon here on the patio, just relaxing, I said to myself, you know, why don't more people get to wealth? Why don't more people get to their financial freedom? And, you know, I, 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 you know that's a tough question, right? Because obviously here in America, our, our financial system is not set up so that everybody can be financially free, right? It's, it's really set up for a, for a very small part of the population to be free. And then the larger part of the pro population just, just works, right? That, that, that's sort of how the, the country's set up, or at least our financial system is set up that way. And of course, you know, when you go to school, uh, whether it be elementary school, all the way up to, I don't know, you, you can get your PhD. They don't teach you anything about wealth. They do teach you how to get a job, but they don't teach you anything about actually how to build wealth and keep it. Actually how to build wealth that actually produces income. They don't teach you that. And we know that. So we got to learn it on our own. I had to learn it on my own, right? I had to learn it on my own. No one, no one, uh, was going to teach me that. 
I had to go out and learn it. I had to figure out how to teach myself. And I did. You know, my journey started at 26, and, and from 26 to, to, to the age I am today, 55, it's been a lifelong journey of learning how this financial system works and how I can position myself to be able to be a part of that financial system so that I could build wealth. And, and obviously, that's one of the main things on this YouTube channel I stress is, is learning how our financial system works, right? Because... The only way you get in the financial game in this country, you got to understand the rules and how it works, right? If, if, if you can understand the rules and how it works, boom, you, you're in shape. You're in, you're in good shape. But, but unfortunately, the, the, the vast majority of folks, they don't know how it works, right? So therefore, they stay on the hamster wheel. They stay in the rat race longer than they should have to stay. For me, I had to stay for, you know, over 20 years. I stayed in the rat race. And I stayed in the rat race not because I wanted to stay in the rat race. I stayed in there because I needed the check. I needed the check. Without the check, I couldn't take care of myself, guys. Couldn't take care of my family. So I needed that check. But I vowed to myself at some point. I vowed to myself at some point. I would get out of that rat race. I vowed to myself at some point I would uh, regain 100% of my financial power. I vowed that to myself. And I just kept working every single day in order to make that happen. So how in the world does making money, keeping that money, and multiplying that money help you build wealth. In America, we do a really good job of making money. I got to say that. We do a really, really good job of making money. Where we run into issues is when you have to keep it and you have to multiply it. That's where we run into issues, major issues. Now, the, 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 making the money part, like I said, we, we got down pat. Uh, most of us. Now, we still got some of us out here who have a hard time making money. And all I can tell you, if you're having a hard time making money, you need to reassess your skill set. You, you got to think about what am I good at? And then take what you're good at and turn that into an income stream. See, a lot of us, we're good at stuff, but we don't turn it into an income stream. We just continue to do stuff we don't want to do that we're really not good at, but that's what we do. We won't take the things we're good at and turn those into income streams, and that's what you have to do. Or, or you have to learn a new skill set. So the money part of it is key. But most, most of us know how to make money. But if you don't know how to make money, here's an opportunity for you to learn. Number one tool to build wealth is income. So if I'm working a job that is not paying me a lot of money, I don't like it, I have an opportunity to go out and find something that I would like and then go ahead and learn how to do that. Learn that skill, right? Learn that skill and then you can start making more money. So making money part, we gotta, we gotta have, right? Because that's the most important tool to build wealth is the income. But once we get the income, we got to keep it. That's step two, right? Step one is we got to make, make the income. Step two is we got to keep it, right? We got to learn how to keep it. Learning how to keep it simply means we got to stop spending it, making the 1% wealthy. That's what learning how to keep it means. It, it has nothing to do with your necessities. We all have necessities that we have to purchase, problem we run into is a lot of us, we purchase a lot of wants, not just needs. And that's where we get in the weeds. That's where we get in trouble. We get in trouble when, when we, we, we blur the line between needs and wants. Somewhere along the way, we just blur that line. We, we can't distinguish between the two. 
And you got to be real crystal, crystal clear on what a need is and what a want is. And I know you guys have heard me, some of you have heard me talk about this before, but, but, but that's a problem because people have blurred that line between need and want. Yes, food is a need, but going out to a restaurant to consume that food is a want. Let's be clear, food is a need, going to a restaurant in order to consume that food, that is a want. We have to cut that out, right? We have to. We got to cut these wants out if we're going to ever get to wealth. We got to do that. That should be priority number one. So what do I recommend to people who are having problems keeping money? The first thing I recommend them do is sit down and then write out all of your income, write it down on a piece of paper and then write on that same piece of paper your expenses, what you spend that money on. So if I got $3,000 a month coming in, I write that down, right? Maybe I got $2,000 from my primary income. I got another $1,000 coming in from side hustles. So I got three grand a month coming in. And then on this end over here, I start writing down everything I spend that three grand on right? Food, shelter, transportation, entertainment, right? Traveling, shopping, whatever you spend it on, you got to write it down and you got to be honest with yourself. Here's the test. Here's the test. When you write down all those expenses and you write down all that income, if your expenses is more than that income, you, 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 something's mis, mis, miscombobulated. You, you, gotta, you gotta rethink that. Your income should always be greater than your expenses. If it's the other way around for you, then that's a problem, right? That's a problem. Let's say your income is more than your expenses. Let's say your income is $500 more than your expenses. I still recommend you take a look at the expenses and you really have a deep dive into those expenses and find out what are wants and what are needs. Let's say you got $3,000 a month coming in, but you got $2,500 a month going out in expenses. You're still $500 to the plus. You still got $500 a month you can multiply. But let's just say your wealth building plan requires $1,000 a month. So then I would go to my expenses and say, okay, this $2,500 that I'm spending, what am I actually spending it on? And then you would just go ahead and dissect that. And anything that's not a necessity, a need, you cut out. So if I'm consuming food, right? Let's say I'm consuming food and I'm spending, let's say I'm spending $750 a month out of that $2,500 a month on food, right? And, and $300 of that is going out to eat, right? 300 of the 750 is going out to eat. So 450, I'm actually going to the grocery store like I should, buying my food, bringing it home, cooking it, eating it. So, so 750, a lot of people think, oh, that's a need. That 750 is a need. No, it's not. 450 is a need. 300 is a want. You got to cut the one out. So if you cut that one out, guess what now? Instead of having 500 to invest, you got 800 to invest. And then you just go down your expense list doing that same exercise. And before you know it, let's say you cut out $500 worth of wants. Now all of a sudden, you're bringing in $3,000 a month and now you got $2,000 a month in expenses. You take the $1,000 a month, now you're ready to build wealth. Now you're ready to build wealth. That's the exercise, guys. It, 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 I know it's not real sexy, but, but that's how you do it. You gotta sit down and just do the fundamentals. A lot of us thinking we're, we're searching for some aha moment 
somebody tell us something that's magical. Oh, I read this book. It's magical. No, it's not, guys. It, this is not magical. It's, it's just sitting down and saying a, 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 an honest conversation with yourself about what you're spending your money on. And I think if you do that, you give yourself a chance to, to do what? Have money to do what? Multiply. That's the whole, that's the whole key, right? I want to get out here and earn. And then I want to do what? Live on less than what I earn. I don't want to live on more than what I earn. I want to get out here and earn as much as I can earn and live on as less, as little as what I earn I can. I want to live on as less, as little as I can because I need the rest of it to do what? I'm ready to, I got to get ready to multiply this and do what? Get to wealth. The only way I get to wealth is through my income. I don't get to wealth any other way. I got to make money and then I got to take care of it, which is step two. You got to keep, right? You got to keep what you earn. And I just walk you through a, a really, really basic way of doing that. Really, it's the only way. Now, you can, you can put bells and whistles on it and fancy it all up and give it all types of fancy names. But at the end of the day, it's just sitting down and writing down your income, writing down your expenses, and then cutting out crap you don't need. And then some of y'all might say, well, you, you, can't, you can't cut your expenses and, 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 and that'll get you to wealth. No, but that's a start. Right? It depends. Right? $1,000 a month, every single month. If you can invest $1,000 a month every single month for the next 10 or 15 years, yeah, I think that can get you to a level of wealth. Again, wealth is determined by us, right? So if, if, if to me, Richard Fain having $1 million is wealth, then that's what my wealth is. I don't care what Tom, Dick, and Harry say. All I care about is what I believe wealth is. And if I believe wealth is a million bucks, that's my wealth. You might believe wealth is 500,000 bucks. You may be believe wealth is 100,000 bucks. It's your journey. You get to decide what wealth is and what wealth isn't. So always keep that close to you guys. Stop letting people tell you what wealth is. Don't, don't let them dump their definition on you. You determine that. You take control of your what? Financial power. Stop giving your financial power to these people out here who, um, who uh, wealth is $10 million. Whatever, man. You go ahead and chase that 10 mil. Wealth to me is this, right? This is what wealth is to me. I don't care about what you think wealth is, right? So make sure you understand that when you're out here earning this money, you got to remember, I got to live on less than what I make. And then I got to do what? Keep, keep, keep what I make. Not give it to the 1% and make them wealthier. Like I mentioned yesterday in, in yesterday's live stream, you got, you got Black Friday coming. It's coming fast. <laughs> It'll be here in about four days. And like I told you, man, they doubling down on y'all. They're going to hit you with every email known to man. You're going to get multiple emails every day. You're going to get phone robocalls. You're going you gonna to get everything. They throwing everything in the kitchen sink at you because this is really where a lot of them make their wealth. Black Friday through Christmas. This is where they make a lot of their wealth, guys. So don't fall into that trap. Just like I said yesterday, don't fall into the Black Friday trap. Remember, you got to keep what you earn if you want to build wealth. You got to keep it. So, so, so please avoid Black Friday if you've got credit card debt. If you have no emergency fund, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, if you have no wealth built, that means you got zero net worth. You got no business participating in Black Friday. That's my opinion. You grown, you do what you want to do. But if you're asking me, you have no business participating in Black Friday at all. If you got any of those four things I just mentioned, Credit card debt, no emergency fund, right? Living paycheck to paycheck, zero net worth. Mm -mm. 
You should not be participating. If, if you fall into the category of having any of those four things, and especially if you got more than one of them, let's say you got two, three, or all four of them, you know you ain't got no business participating in Black Friday. You, you can't keep, you got to keep what you earn, guys. No one's going to give you financial freedom. You got to get out here and earn it, right? You got to earn it. And the truth is the truth, but also the truth will set you free. Hear the truth and set yourself free. Get yourself out of financial bondage. Get yourself out of financial bondage, guys. You, you do not have the ultimate freedom until you have assets that generate income to take care of you. That's the ultimate freedom, right? That's the ultimate freedom. And that's what this conversation this afternoon is about. How to make, keep, and multiply wealth. We talked about make. That's just making money. Flat out making money. Getting out there hustling, doing what you got to do to make money. Some of us need to make $2,000 a month. Some of us need to make $5,000 a month. Some of us need to make $10,000 a month. How much money we need to make is predicated on what? Whatever our financial freedom goal is. If my financial freedom goal is I need $2,000 a month to live on, then I ain't got to make that much money. I may have to invest for a little bit longer, but I ain't got to make that much money if that's, if that's the goal. Because that is about $400,000 worth of net worth, right? $400,000 worth of net worth. I'm talking about paper assets, real estate for income, a business. If you got $400,000 of net worth, and you can get a 6% rate of return on that $400,000. That's $24,000 a year divided by 12. There's your $2,000 per month. So for someone who says, hey, my financial freedom is just me being able to build my assets so that they generate $2,000 a month, then guess what? You will probably need to build your assets to about $400,000. And that's okay. If that's wealth to you, and if that's the financial freedom number, then go get it. You don't, have to, you don't have to chase my number. You don't have to chase some other guy's number or gal's number. Chase your own number. What if you say, hey, man, a million is my number. I need to be at a million. Well, then a million is going to get you about $60,000 worth of passive income. Right? Divide that by 12 five grand a month so five grand a month if that's your number that you need to have coming in and passive income in order to have the lifestyle you want at a certain age then you know whatever age you are today let's say you're 30 years old a day and you want to you want to have that milski by the time you're 45 you want to be able to live on five grand for the rest of your life at 45 then from 30 years old to 45 you got to build your assets to $1 million, All right? Paper assets, real estate for income, businesses. That's what you got to do. You got to build those three, the big three. What if you say, I need two mil? What will two mil generate for me, right? Two mil is going to generate about $10,000 per month. See, that was my goal at 30 years old. My goal, and you guys know I've told you this, my goal was 10000 a month. No secret for me, that was my goal. It was to make $10,000 a month from my investments, from my assets. That was financial freedom to me. That was wealth to me. So over the last 20 years, that's what I've been doing. I've been earning, I've been keeping what I earn, and then I've been multiplying what I keep, right? So earn plus keep plus multiply equals wealth. That's the mathematical equation right there, guys. That's the equation, right? Income, right? Keep that income and then multiply that income equals wealth. Who determines wealth? You do. Not me, not your neighbor, not your best friend, not your favorite financial guru. Mm -mm. You. Not some book you read. No. You determine what wealth is. And as soon as you realize that and, 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 and get your financial power back, the better off you're going to be.
the better off you're going to be, right? So let's talk a little bit about this multiply thing. How do, how do we multiply it? Okay, Richard, I heard you. You said the number one tool to build wealth is what? My income. Okay. So I know either I'm happy with my income or I'm not happy with my income. The bottom line is income is your number one tool to build wealth. So if I'm happy with my income, it's providing me what I need. All I got to do now is keep it and then invest it. If I'm not happy with my income, then what I need to do is reevaluate my skill set. Right. Increase my value to the marketplace through a higher level skill set. And then I make more money. It's that simple, guys. It's not more complicated than that. The amount of money you're making right now is because where you are on the financial totem pole when it comes to value being added to the marketplace. Some of us are at the top of the totem pole because we add a lot of value to the marketplace so we get compensated for it. Some of us are in the middle. We add a little bit of value so we get compensated. Some of us are at the bottom. We add really no value to the marketplace so we make very little money. It's that simple. You either add a lot of value, you add some value, or you add no value. If you're in the no value, you're not going to make a lot of money. You're just not. That's the truth. So if you want to get yourself to a point where you make more money, you got to add more value. That could, you know, and there are many ways to add more value. Again, learn a skill set that makes you more valuable, right? That's one way. Or go out and get you a second job or, or, or three or four side hustles. That'll get you some more money because why? You, you're, you're, you're giving more of your time, right, to, to, to multiple things. You got a primary income. You got a couple secondary incomes. You're giving more of your time. Why? Because you lack, you lack a high-level skill set. Sometimes if we lack a high-level skill set, that means we got to work harder. We got to work more. We got to work more hours. Typically, people that have a high level skill set, right? If they do work a lot of hours, they're highly compensated for it. Normally, if you have a have a really low skill set, you can work a lot of hours, but you're really not compensated for it. Right. So so the, the, the real key for me was high level skill set, but work very little for it. Very little hours. And when I started my business, RF Financial Consulting, that was the deal. The deal was find something you can do one or two hours a day, but make pff, more money than you've ever made. And that's what I did. I found a skill set. I already had the skill set. I just found a way to apply that skill set more effectively. So I can put in a couple hours a day and then I can make more money than I've ever made. High level skill set plus very little of my time I have to give to that to make it work. That's the best of both worlds, right? That's where we want to be. The only thing better than that, guys, is having assets where I have to trade no time. I don't have to use no skill set. But I get income to take care of me. That's the only thing better than having a high level skill set with very little time put in in order to make a lot of money. The only one that trumps that is when you have assets where you don't have to work at all and you make a lot of money, right? It's enough to take care of you. And again, who determines what a lot of money is? You and I determine that. Again, let's not let people take our financial power. Don't tell me what a lot of money is. What a lot of money is is going to be whatever I say it is. It's my financial freedom, right? It's, it, it, it's my financial freedom. So I get to make all the choices. I get to tell myself what wealth is. I get to tell myself what a lot of money is. I get to choose that. I cannot allow people to come into my life or speak into my life things that don't line up with what I'm trying to get accomplished financially. I got to keep those people out of my life at all costs. At all costs. Because they're going to keep you down at the bottom. Right? You got to keep people out of your life that are, are not in line and in step with what you're trying to get accomplished financially. That's just the way it is, guys. I know it's hard to, to, to fathom that, but it's the truth. Everybody that hang around you ain't, ain't, don't want you to do good. Everybody that's in your circle don't want you to do good, guys. 
You do understand that, right? Right. Yeah. Everybody in your circle don't want you to do well. So you got to make sure you understand that. I'm not saying you got to kick them out of your circle. Personally, I don't want anybody in my circle who I, I can't 100% say they got my back. They, they want me to do well. If I can't say that about them, then guess what? I don't want them in my circle. I don't want them in my circle. I don't want them in my gang of five. I need a gang of five that has already done what I'm trying to do. That, that's, that's my gang of five. I don't want nobody in my gang of five behind me, right? I only want people in my gang of five who have done what I'm trying to do. So if I'm trying to be a millionaire, the people in my gang of five, they all need to be millionaires. And again, you don't have to personally know all those people. You can just go out on the internet and, 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 and pick and choose who you decide you wanna soak up information from. And then use that information wisely. Use that information to build your wealth so you can get the millionaire status. And then at some point, you'll be in someone else's gang of five who is looking up to you because they're trying to get where you're at. See, that's the beauty of this thing, man. You help one, all right? Somebody help you, then you help one, right? You, you, you pay it forward. And that's so, sort of what I do here on this YouTube channel. I just pay it forward. I pay it forward because somebody helped me many years ago reprogram myself. Understand the concept of money, earn money, right? Money, keep money. Multiply money equals what? Wealth. Somebody along the way taught me that. And, and I appreciate them teaching me that because without that bit of knowledge, I wouldn't be at freedom right now. I wouldn't have assets right now. I'd probably be still working. Paycheck to paycheck. Wondering uh, how I'm going to pay for this Black Friday stuff I'm getting ready to put on my credit card if I still got any any limit left right that's what i'd probably be doing right now worried about i can't even enjoy the holidays because i'm worried about how i'm gonna pay for whatever i'm trying to buy whether it be for my kids whether it be for my family whether it be for myself whether it be for whoever a lot of people are so stressed during the holidays and the reason they're financially stressed is because they they're they're in financial bad shape and any time the holidays roll around where people expect something from you, 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 the stress catch up to you. That financial stress hits you. And instead of you enjoying the holidays, you hate the holidays. Because you know your financial situation you're in right now is real raggedy. And you're saying to yourself, goodness gracious, I already got $5,000 in credit card debt. I already don't have no emergency fund. Whew, I'm already living paycheck to paycheck. I ain't got nothing in retirement savings. And now all of a sudden, I, I know I'm gonna have to figure out something because I got family. I, I can't go over to so-and-so house. I, I, I can't have my kids wake up Christmas morning, if, for those of you that celebrate Christmas. I can't wake up, have my kids wake up Christmas morning and they ain't got no gifts. So whatever I gotta do, I, I, I'm gonna get out there and do it. I'll, I'll, I'll pay the consequences later. But, but all through the holidays, you so financially stressed because you know holidays gonna come to an end, January gonna roll around and, and back to the real world. And you gonna have to deal with all this debt you continue to accumulate because you had so much pressure on you to perform during Black Friday. You had so much pressure on you to perform for Christmas and whatever else you celebrate, right? What I'm telling you guys is you better get your finance, financial house in order. And like I said, if I'm you, I skip Black Friday. I don't even worry about it. I don't go nowhere. I stay home. And then if I got children, guess what? I go have a conversation with my kids. Right? I go have a conversation with the, with the little prince and princesses. And I tell them the truth. Baby. We tight this year. I don't have it. I'm trying to get my act together financially. 
I want to be able to set a good example for y'all so that y'all understand that the real freedom in this world is when you control your own financial power, when you control your own time, when you control your own financial destiny. That's a conversation you should be having with your children, not going out buying them stuff you can't afford to buy them. No, no. I, I keep telling y'all, these kids are not going to do what you tell them to do. They're going to do what they see you do. That's the way it is. That's how I was. My mom told me something. I just looked at what she did. Right? And, and that's how most kids learn. They don't learn from what you tell them. They learn from what they see you do. So have that conversation with your children. Have that conversation with your significant other. Have that conversation with your family members who expecting something from you on Christmas. We already got $1.3 trillion in credit card debt in this country, guys. That's not a good thing. And a lot of you guys are a part of that debt. Don't get in more credit card debt. Don't get yourself further in the hole because you have this financial pressure on you to buy things that you can't afford to buy. And you don't want to tell anybody the truth because you think they may think you ain't doing well. See, that's that pride thing again. Remember I told you the three financial killers. Fear, pride, and greed. Those are the three financial killers. So don't let pride creep in. Oh, you know, we can't let the neighbors know. Uh, the neighbor's going to get their son a four-wheeler, so uh, little Tommy want a four-wheeler too. We can't really afford it, but we just cannot let the neighbor's kid get a four-wheeler and little Tommy don't get one. Guys, y'all better tell little Tommy the truth. We want to create generational wealth in, 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 in this country. Well, there is a lot of generational wealth in this country just from the 1%. The 99% ain't got no wealth to pass down. So ain't no generational wealth for the 99%. The 1% passed down generational wealth. Let's don't get that twisted. There ain't no generational wealth being passed down from the 99%. So instead of, instead of buying that four-wheeler that you can't afford for little Tommy, you, you sit down and tell little Tommy the truth that we're in some financial trouble right now, son. And we got to get out of this trouble. And we all going to have to buckle down and, 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 and sacrifice something. We're going to have to all buckle down and sacrifice something in the short term so that we can have everything we want as a family in the long term. That's a conversation you should be having with your kids and whoever else is in your, your Christmas gift buying circle. I know it ain't. I know it ain't what you want to hear, but I'm here just here to give you the truth. According to me, right? This is my opinion. You do whatever you want to do. It's your money. But, but if you're one of those four buckets, credit card debt bucket, living paycheck to paycheck bucket, no emergency fund bucket, right? No retirement savings bucket. You shouldn't be participating in any of this stuff happening over the next month, especially not when it comes to buying no gifts. Like I said yesterday, you guys need to take them and enjoy um, a picnic or something. Take them on a walk or something. Take them to the beach and just hang out and have fun and get to know each other again. Do something like that other than going out, buying stuff on Black Friday that you can't afford. And, and the rest of December until Christmas rolls around and New Year's rolls. Hey, man, a lot of debt is piled up during that short period of time during the year. A lot of debt. A lot of people get into debt. And guess what? They go into 2024 behind the eight ball. You should be going into 2024 in front of the eight ball. You should, you should, you should have all your financial stuff under control with a plan ready to execute January 1. That's how you should be going into 2024. You shouldn't be going into 2024 panicked, afraid, broke, in debt, no plan, just winging it. Winging it going to keep you in the 
Keep winging it. You're going to stay in the 99% for the rest of your life. Keep winging it. Guys, we got to stop winging it. We got to get a plan together. That's why I'm doing this live tonight. Make money, keep money, multiply money. So big three, let's move on to multiply. Then we're going to wrap this thing up. Big three, right? Big three is what I recommend you consider to multiply your money. Now, of course, you know, right now we're in a situation in the stock market with paper assets where it's it's I think it's one of the greatest opportunities we've had in a long time to be able to capitalize on discounted blue chip assets. And if we have some patience and we have some discipline and we have some consistency, we can build wealth right now these next couple of years. And then continue building it until you get to what? Your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So paper assets, it's one of the big three. That's one of the things that I heavily invest in is paper assets. Now, I'm not your financial advisor and I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just telling you that the big three have helped me build my wealth. And we're talking about multiplying money now, right? If we're talking about multiplying money, then you, you, you got to be able to put it in something that will help it grow itself. That's what multiply means. If I put a dollar in, I want to multiply it to five dollars. The only way I do that, I got to put it in something that will multiply it to five dollars, that will grow it to five dollars. And I think the big three, especially paper assets in the stock market, is one of the, the, the most convenient ways to do it. And you don't have to have a lot of money to get started in, the, in, in, in paper assets. You can have fifty dollars a week. $100 a week, $100 a month, you can get started, right? You can get started. You can get started on the Weeble app, which is down in the description box. Click on that link, sign up, get you up to 12 free stocks, and now you're ready to put your $100, $500, $1,000, whatever your budget will allow, you're ready to put that in the paper assets and start building wealth. So that's one way you can multiply your money. Well, how do you know you can multiply your money that way, Richard? Well, because I've done it for over 25 years. I multiplied my money through paper assets for 25 years. Specifically, the broader stock market through S&P 500 ETFs and index funds. Total stock market ETFs and index funds. And then some sector ETFs, like the technology sector, the healthcare sector. I also bought some individual stocks. Right. I bought some individual stocks over the last 25 years. Big, 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 big buyer of Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Tesla, Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Amazon, Alphabet. Right. Meta. Just named y'all the Magn seven big boy companies, Magnificent Seven, just named them for you. So I bought some individual stocks, but let's make sure I make this clear. 80 to 90% of my portfolio is going to be ETFs and index funds. 5 to 10% will be individual stocks. That's it. Why? Because I don't want to be the expert. If I'm picking individual stocks, I'm trying to be the expert. I got to be able to pick winners and losers when I'm picking individual stocks. I do not want to be the expert. So I want to be a guy who depends on another expert. And the expert, more times than not, I depend on is going to be Vanguard. Now, I can buy my Vanguard ETFs on the Weeble app, but they're still Vanguard ETFs. Or I can go directly to Vanguard, open up an account and buy them there. But that's the expert I depend on. And I buy their ETFs that track the broader stock market, specifically S&P 500 index and the total stock market. That's what I typically do. 80 to 90% of the money that I invest because I don't want to be the expert. How do I know the S&P 500 is going to give me the type of return I'm looking for? Because I went out and did some research. And the research tells me this. Over the last 90 years, the S&P 500 has returned 7 to 10% over a 90-year period on average, 7 to 10%. Listen, guys, if I can get an 8% return on my money over the next 20 years, 
and I put $2,000 a month away, I'm going to be a multimillionaire, man, in 20 years. Multimillionaire. $2,000 a month, putting it in something that will give me an 8% return on average over the next 20 years, I'm going to be a multimillionaire. That's the power of compound in the stock market, guys. So paper assets is one of them. The next one you can use to multiply your money is what? Real estate. That's the second one in the big three. Real estate for income. I use that one as well. Bought real estate for 25 years, right? Bought my first property when I was 26. Use FHA first time home buyers. Little 68, 60, little $68,000 property. Put $3,000 down. Boom, move right in. Stayed in there for two years. Built some equity up. Put an equity line on the property. Tapped into that equity. Pulled it out. Put it on a down payment on the second house. I moved in the second house to live. Put a tenant in the first house. Rinse and repeat for about four times before I got myself to a point where I didn't have to live in the house no more when I bought it. I was okay with that though. See, that was the blueprint. I wasn't trying to get fancy. I didn't need no house hack. I'm not saying you can't house hack. I'm not saying you can't Airbnb every room in your house. That's what you want to do. That ain't my cup of tea. My cup of tea is this. One tenant or family in there for one year. That's, that's the type of real estate I buy. And that's how I operate my real estate. And I did that for whew, 25 years. Yeah, rinse and repeat, same, same thing. Single family home, great neighborhood where people have a desire to live, buy it, five to one leverage, go to the bank, get 80%, I put 20% in, and I just kept rinsing and repeating that. 10 properties over a 25-year period, $100,000, $100,000 in equity on average for each property, and you do the math. You do the math. Multi-million dollar net worth just from the real estate portfolio, right? And then, of course, the paper assets which I did for 25 years and I'm still doing now. Two main sources of my wealth before I started my company. Now, last one, and then we're gonna wrap this up. Last one is business. That's the third one of the big three, businesses. So when I was 50 years old, no, 51 years old, I started my own business, RF Financial Consulting, when I was 51 years old, guys. Took my skill set, turned it into a business. That business over the last four years has made me more money than I made in everything I've done before, before it, right? It's made me a lot of money in four years. I mean, I made in four years what it took me 20 years to make in banking. And guys, I was making a six-figure income for at least half of the time I was in banking. Well, 10 years of the time I was in banking, I was making a good six-figure income. And I've made more in four years in my own business than I made in 20 years in the banking industry. And I don't tell you that because I'm trying to brag or boast. I'm just telling you the power of taking your skill set and turning it into a business. If you have a skill set that you believe you can turn into a business. And the only way I turned it into a business is because I had the skill set and I just figured out, okay, how can I use this skill set to help people? And then once I learned how to help people, the money came, right? So, so that was the third leg of the big three. And now I've taken this money that I've earned over the last four years, some of it I've, 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 I've spent because I've, I, I had some bucket list items. The only big item that I've really bought is this house, right? This is the only thing I really bought big. The cars that I had, I already had, um, I just paid them off, right? But the big item was the house. Other than that, everything else has been invested, continuing to grow the net worth. And I'm gonna continue to do that for the next, I don't know, I'm giving myself another five-year run here on YouTube if, they'll, if, they, don't, if, you know, if they don't cancel me. I, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stay on here for another five years if I can. Just making content and, and doing what I can to help you guys to get to your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. 
So that's how I multiplied the money that I kept. So I had to make it. I kept it and I multiplied it in the big three. Right. So all I'm telling you is, is that's an opportunity for you to do the same thing if if you want to. Or you can go find other asset classes. You don't have to use the big three, but you're going to need to use something to multiply. Right. Putting it under your mattress ain't going to cut it. Right. Most cases, putting it in the bank ain't going to cut it. Now, right now, I know it's, it's unusual because they're giving you a higher rate of return right now because interest rates are high. But you know as well as I do, interest rates ain't going to be high forever. They're coming down at some point. Dumb interest rates going to come down at some point. And when these interest rates come down, when the Fed start lowering those interest rates, your savings account where you're getting that 4%, that 5%, oh, that's coming down too. So you probably got another couple of years, maybe a year and a half, to enjoy that 3 4 5% return you're getting on your, on your money market. But let's not get it twisted. That's not going to be enough for most people to build wealth for them because you're not going to get the 4 or 5% that long enough. For most of us, we're going, to have to, we're going to have to invest for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years to get to wealth. And you ain't going to get that 3%, 4%, 5% in your money market account for that long. As soon as the Fed start lowering them, inter- them short-term interest rates, that little money market rate lowering too. See, these banks, they ain't stupid. They, they, they got to give you that type of rate to suck in the deposits because they taking the deposits and making more money than what they paying you. You think, oh, golly, I'm beating the bank. I got them this time. No, you don't. You ain't got them. <laughs> them people making a lot of money on your money. They're giving you 4 or 5%, but can you imagine what they're making? I guarantee you they're making three times what you're making. I guarantee you. Because I was in banking for 25 years, I knew exactly how the banking system works. Right? They take your deposits, and they can lend those deposits out 10 times, 10 to 1. Yep. They can lend it out 10 to 1. So you're trying to tell me they nah, they paying you, let's say your, your money market paying you 4%. I guarantee you, if you go there to try to get a personal loan, it's, it'll be 12%. It'll be three times what they're paying you, I promise you. Go to your local bank and say, hey, what's your interest rate on a personal loan tomorrow? When you go in there, ask them. Ask them what their interest rate is on a personal loan. I guarantee you it's 12% or higher, especially if they're paying you 4%. You already know if you go in there and ask for a mortgage loan, you're going to be paying 7 percent 8%. Right? You are. So, yeah, you're getting higher rate of return on your money market, but you also, if you're borrowing money, it's skyrocketed, right? So, so the key is, the key is find assets that will pay you a higher rate of return for longer, right? Money market won't do that. For now it will, but it won't consistently do that over the next 10 years. It won't do it, right? So here's the, here's the situation. You got to find something that will. Now, remember, I said paper assets, S&P, 7 to 10% return over the last 90 years. That's pretty daggone good. That's why I use paper assets, specifically the S&P 500. When you're talking about, um, when you're talking about real estate for income, typically, in my experience, seven, about 7 to 10 to 12% is what you can make, right? You can probably make a little bit more than that if you don't have debt on the property. But if you got debt, you're still looking at about a 7 to 10% cash on cash return, which is pretty dang on good when you multiply that out over multiple properties that you're going to buy over multiple years like I did. It was pretty good, pretty good return on my investment, especially when I borrowed 80% of the money and controlled 100% of the property. I put 20% of my money in and I control 100% of the property. I control 100% of the cash flow can't beat that. That's why five to one leverage is so powerful, guys. And then obviously a business, which was the best multiple I've ever had on any investment I've ever made. All I invested was what? Some of my time, no money. I didn't have to invest much money to start my company. Yeah, I had to form the company. So three or $400 to the state of Florida to form it. Of course, I have to pay my CPA to do all my books. Um, So yeah, I got some expenses, but teeny weeny. All right, compared to the, the, the money that I make. So, yeah, that's the best multiple I've ever had on any investment. I, I put my time in, I, I leveraged my skill set, and I make a 
a lot of money. Best investment, best trade for time and money trade I've ever had, right? Because I can put in two hours a day, but make more money than I've ever made in my life. That's where I tell people, if you're trying to start a business, figure out that where you can start one with that type of exchange of time for money, like I did. Two hours a day, and boom, I make a lot of money. So big three is how I multiplied it. I would tell you guys, figure out how you're going to multiply it. Right, figure out how you're gonna multiply. But when you do figure that out, when you do settle on something, look at the historical track record. Make sure that asset that you're putting your money in has a historical track record of making money. Don't just put it in anything. It needs to have a historical track record of making money. That's why you got so many people right now in trouble with crypto. See, crypto, Bitcoin started in 2009. And, and for several years, I mean, for four or five years, it just putted along doing nothing. And then all of a sudden it jumped. But now it's, you know, it's still, it's still a decent investment if you know what you're doing, but it ain't where it was. You're talking about Bitcoin was $69,000 a coin at its height in 2021. I haven't looked at it in a while, but it's, it's in the, I don't even know where it's at. It's probably in the, in, in the, in the 20,000 range. Or, or higher or lower, I don't know where it's at today, but it ain't 69,000. So think about it. Let's say you put 250 grand in Bitcoin in 2021 when it was at $69,000 a, 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 a pop. Oh, somebody just popped in and said it's uh, 35 or $36,000 a coin. But just think now if you'd have put your life savings in it in 2021 when it was $69,000 a coin. And now it's, let's say it's 35,000 a coin. That's like 50% value is gone. Now it may come back. You don't realize it until you try to cash it in, but it may come back. But for me, it just didn't have a long enough track record. I like stuff like the S&P that got a 90 year track record, not no five or six year track record. So, so all I'm telling you is, is you know, crypto is, a, is, a, is, a, is an asset class, right? So if you choose crypto, you better figure out crypto that has some type of historical history associated with it. If you, if you choose art, if you choose, uh, you know, uh, precious metals, you, you, you better make sure you check the historical track record of it. You better make sure it has a long history of multiplying money. I'm going to hang my hat on the big three. Real estate for income, businesses, and paper assets. That's it for me. I ain't buying nothing else. Those are the only three I've ever bought. Those are the only three I ever will buy. And any real money. I done played around with some meme coins, Sheeb and Doge, but that ain't, I ain't got no money in that, really. Everything that I've done, I put it in the big three. And I'm, I'm happy I did because it's done well. Right? Patience, consistency, and discipline, it's done well. So all I'm telling you guys is find you something that you can latch on to and keep, well, make, keep, and multiply. That's what you got to do. And again, I'm going to say this one more time and then I'm going to sign on out of here. Y'all got to stay away from that Black Friday now because, hey, that's, that's a trap. That's a, that's a trap the 1% has set for you guys. And they've, they've been trapping you for years. I was trapped for years. I was trapped. I was trapped for years until I reprogrammed. And I said to myself, shoot, man, I ain't finna go into debt messing around with these people, making them rich. They're already rich. Well, I got to keep making them rich. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to put this money in the big three. I'm going to put this money in the big three. See, they don't want you to put money in assets, guys. They don't want, they, they want you with no assets. They want you in credit card debt. They want you with no emergency fund. They want you living paycheck to paycheck. They want you with no retirement savings. See, if they can get you cornered like that, they can control you. They can control your financial power. If they can trap you, if they can keep you in financial bondage, they got you. They got you. They control you. They own you. Only time you get out from under their thumb 
is when you reprogram yourself, get your financial life together, start building assets, that's when, you, that's when you're free, right? Most of us have been there. Some of us are still there. I encourage you to get yourself out of that trap. It starts with Black Friday. Skip it. Don't act like it's just another Friday. Don't even go, yeah, don't even get online. Don't, don't, don't go to no stores. Don't do any of that stuff. Just don't do it. What you should do is sit down that day and figure out your game plan for 24. On Black Friday, let's make a pact that all of us, we're going to wake up that morning and we're going to sit down for an hour and think about what we want to get accomplished in 24. And then let's write a commitment to ourselves and put that commitment on your mirror in your bathroom. So every morning you walk in there to wash your face, brush your teeth, whatever you do in there, Whatever you do in there, you see that commitment staring back at you every single day, 365 days. That's the commitment you're going to make to yourself that you're going to make 2024 your best year ever. Let's make that commitment to ourselves, guys. I'm going to make that commitment to me. I'm going to sit down on Black Friday. And when I do it, I'm going to do a live stream on Black Friday and I'm going to show you all my commitment letter. That's the only receipt y'all going to get out of me. <laughs> Show you your brokerage statements. Show me your, uh, man, get out of here. But I will show you that receipt. I'm going to show you that 2024 commitment letter that I'm going to write to myself. And I'm going to put it in my mirror in my bathroom. So every morning when I get up, I can reaffirm what the game plan is today. I don't care if you got debt. I don't care if you're living paycheck to paycheck. I don't care if you don't have an emergency fund. I don't care if you don't have any retirement savings. Make the commitment that you will change that in 2024. Right? Make that commitment. And then I want you guys on Friday, this Friday, I want you guys to be aware that I'm going to do this live stream and hopefully in that live stream i'll have some of you guys in attendance and we can all celebrate our commitment letter that we're going to change our financial situation in 2024. If you guys with me on that i greatly would appreciate it well guys i appreciate y'all tapping in on a on a on a monday well, early evening here now, y'all can see, man, it's, it's beautiful in this place, right? It's beautiful out here. It's quiet. Y'all see the dream pool with the jacuzzi right there? Okay, let me stop showing stuff before I get, get thrown under the bus here. Oh, golly, there you go. Well, you got to show your pool. Well, you got to show this. So let me, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me just get, get out of here. Turn you guys loose. Let you, let you get back to the rest of your Monday before I get... I already got canceled on Instagram, so let me let me <laughs> let me stop while I'm ahead of the game. I already got I already got canceled on Instagram. Joe got to figure out a way to cancel me on Instagram. I don't need them canceling me on YouTube. So hey, thank you guys for checking in and tapping in today. I appreciate you. You know I love you. You guys have changed my life uh, for the better. So thank you. I want y'all to hit that thumbs up before you get out of here, though. Please tap the thumbs up. Tap that thumbs up. Tap it, tap it, tap it. It means a lot. I appreciate the super chat. Everybody that, that did a, the super chats, man, thank you. I know sometimes I forget to say that. I appreciate your generosity. It, it, it means a lot. So thank you so much for the super chat, guys. Whoever did it, I appreciate it. I know I didn't, I didn't really focus on it because in these lives, I try to just give the message and, and not get distracted. But thank you so much. I appreciate you. Hit that thumbs up, guys. Tap me up before you get out of here. Tap me up. Tap me up. I need it. I need it. The YouTube channel needs it. YouTube is tripping on the views. They tripping on everything. But that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We just keep controlling what we can control, which is just put the content up. I can't control who YouTube shows it to. But I do know if you hit the thumbs up, it gives us a better chance to get the content spread out to more people. Give y'all one more shot of that view. Look at that sunset back there, man. 
Check it out. Look at that sunset back there. That sunset is, whoo, that thing is killer. I'll be back here every day, man. Be right back here, sitting on, listening to music, watching that sunset, bro. So all you, oh, hey, whatever freedom means to you. See, this, this right now is what freedom is to me. And back of me, just, just wide open, nothing but space, right? Nothing but space. See, that's freedom to me. Whatever's freedom to you, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Make money. Keep money. Multiply money. Go get it. Go get it. If you want them 12 free stocks from Weeble, guys, click on that link down in the description box. Open up your new Weeble account today. Go get that free stock. Go get that free money. Send me an email. Let me know you've opened the Weeble account. You funded the Weeble account. I'm going to send you that Weeble tutorial video to walk you through how to use the Weeble app so you can start building wealth today. All you got to do, hit that email address down in the description box and email me and let me know. Thoughts become things. You can see it in your mind. You can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. And I'm going to catch you on the next one. Peace.